morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for joining. At CIQ, we're focused on powering the next generation of software infrastructure, leveraging the capabilities of cloud, hyperscale, and HPC. From research to the enterprise, our customers rely on us for the ultimate Rocky Linux, Werewolf, and Aptainer support escalation. We provide deep development capabilities and solutions, all delivered in the collaborative spirit of open source. Uh oh, what's the new hat this time? What's up? How are you? I'm amazing. Thank you for asking. And you, Mr. Zane? It's Thursday. Happy Thursday. Yeah, Thursdays are always exciting because we get to be here together live into the world talking about all the cool things that CIQ is doing. And I figured that I would like move up with my hair. And what's like happening it. here is I am ascending. To higher and higher heights. Higher and higher ponytails. I, I like, like it. You like, like that? that? Yes. It's because good. we are so excited to be presenting one of our newest additions to CIQ products and services called Ascender Automation Platform. Very exciting. It's been, I feel it's like been there should be like we've... some music. Do you have like a ding, bing, boom, boom, bing? Uh, I, I don't. All the stuff I have is not that. Okay. In fact, All right. Somebody watching. I don't even have that something nothing. Cool. <laughs> nothing. Mike's watching. I see Mike out there. Right? Welcome, Mike. <laughs> Thanks That's for joining. Awesome. So I know we have a couple of other freeloaders who are joining us today. I would like to bring them in. There they are. <laughs> freeloaders. There you are. Rose, you look like a character out of Greece. <gasps> That's what I was oh, going for. There you oh, go. Oh, there I know. I wanted to like move this away so we could like, you know, see Rocky, but really the do is this forward action. Yes. I need like a cool pink leather jacket. Choreographed dancing here in a minute. <laughs> you don't want to see that, but yeah. The Ascender song. The bird flies away <laughs> into the, into the end. I heard a, I heard a, a, a fan theory that, uh, you know, where like, uh, you know, he saved Sandy from the beach when she's drowning. Apparently she dies. This is a fever dream. And that's why the car flies away at the end, right? Because it's all just some crazy convoluted thing her brain made up. A little, little story for you there. That's, I like that's it. actually making my brain hurt. Now I got to go back and watch the ending. I know. I remember the scene. <laughs> <laughs> You're all dripping now. Cool. Well, hello, uh, Mr. Greg Soul. You have, you know, introduced yourself, regardless of the name. You are a face no one can forget. Um, AKA, you guys, I call him Stash. Just so you know, I know he doesn't like it, but isn't it make it even Stop more trying fun? to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I can't help it. I don't All know. Right, I mean, well, we already have Nick over here calling you the automation automation mustache. So oh, it's starting starting to stay. The auto mustache. Auto like stash. There, auto stash. There you go. <laughs> You're all dead to me. <laughs> okay. You can't leave yet. Yeah. Who's talk first? <laughs> Michael. Welcome. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. What's going on? Hello from Chicago. Chicago. Okay. My brother's there right now. Oh, yeah? What for? <clears throat> he, you know, he, he's into cards, like trading cards. You know, I, I mean, I remember that when I was a kid, like garbage pail kids. That was kind of fun. But I don't, I don't, I just can't even imagine like grown people being into that. But apparently it's a thing. <laughs> it's a huge thing. And he's going to a convention to trade cards. I think you may have just alienated a huge portion of our audience. Really. I'm kidding. I was I was almost offended. If I had something within reach, I would show you, but I don't. Do you, do you still have do you have garbage pail kid cards though? No, no, I don't I don't have those, but that's Okay, why is that not? I, cool? I haven't heard that term in forever. <laughs> it's fantastic. I love those. <laughs> it is cool. It's cool. It's totally cool. The coolest. Okay, so back on track, Ascender. What 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 is this? What exactly is Ascender Automation Platform? Go. Greg, you want to take this one first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> of course, I'm dying no, to Titan, talk. Titan everybody. gets this one. <laughs> oh, Titan gets this one. As no, quickly okay. as I, I can make it, it's all about me. I'm obviously going to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's an automation platform. Uh, Rose, you kind of you nailed it. It's sort of uh, right there in the name, right? The idea being you have a bunch of infrastructure 
that you want to maintain. Uh, something I've noticed in that uh, IT, a lot of our companies uh, that we work with, there's always mergers, acquisitions, they're always bringing in new stuff. And guess what? They don't get new bodies to take care of all this equipment, right? So you got to make do with the people you have. But honestly, most of the teams I run into, really solid teams, really smart individuals. So you've got the talent in there. You just need to give them some extra tools, right? To help them keep their hands around all of it. And so this is where Ascender kind of pops in and allows you to sort of orchestrate, automate at an enterprise level, right? Something you can scale and do big and amazing things with. So I say IT because it runs the stack. It doesn't matter where you sit, in what silo you sit, you can take advantage of this, right? So if a lot of times when we think of automation, we're just thinking about like cloud engineers or, uh, you know, ops guys maintaining a bunch of Linux servers. But guess what? I'm a network engineer. And uh, if my caveman brain can do this stuff, then uh, absolutely anybody can. And it adds a ton of value to my life as well as security people. Or I've even seen people on the BU side or end users, believe it or not, get to take advantage of automation. They just don't know they're doing it, which is to me the kind of one of the, the best parts of the platform, right? Making it easy for the masses. It's fantastic. So one of the things that you just mentioned coming from an operations background a long time ago, we would build something, hand it to operations. And what we built, we get changed to match what they were working with. So it's like we build a tool, we hand it over, they go build a new tool, kind of eliminating the tool we had. And then you would have another group that would build a tool that was supposed to be easy to support. And they would take that and have to build another tool. There's never any consistency at all. And it became a, if we had to come back and build something new or update it, we had to completely start over every time. It was painful. How does this fix that problem? Yeah, for sure. So this one is cross silo, as in we've got a single language we're all going to be talking, right? So this really is going to take your Ansible playbooks and lets you kind of create them, right? You create them over here. You put them in your Git repository. This pulls it in and makes it so that you can easily run these. So uh, a term I learned from one Michael Ford. Oh, I always point the wrong direction. He's over there. Uh, <laughs> least privileged access, right? So only give people permission to things that they really need it to, right? Don't just give them absolutely everything. And so this allows me to put my automations in here. So I'm the network guy. I create my automations in here. And then I can share my automations in this platform with people on the operations team or the security team. But all they can do is execute my automations. They can't they can't really look at them. They can't change any of my credentials. They can't touch any of that stuff. Don't break my things. But I allow them to run my automations easily inside this environment and safely and uh, monitored and logged and all that good stuff. Right. It's all kind of baked in there. But we're all speaking the same language. Right. If we're all writing playbooks, then uh, if I say, you know, module or uh, collection or whatever it happens to be, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. And I can look at your stuff. I may be able to see what you're doing. I may not know 100% why you're doing those things, but I can tell what you're doing in there. So you don't have to be a programmer. Like I said, if you're a caveman like me, a network guy, you can kind of get in there and understand what's going on. To me, that's one of the, the beautiful things in there is that I don't have to know what everybody else is doing anymore. I just get to take their Lego bricks and I snap them into my little diorama here. You know, I open up my, my Nike shoe box that I've created this cool world in and I just get to start snapping their pieces in. I don't have to think about it, which I really like. So you're I was going to say, worlds? go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I was going to just kind of double click on a lot of what Greg said too, like especially with the different teams that are working together. And Zane, you said it like everyone might be using disparate tools. They might be making custom scripts. What if someone leaves? So what if something happens that could cause problems? Um, and rarely do you have a situation if you're deploying an application where you have one team that's in charge of everything. So what happens if you have different tasks that different teams are responsible for, and then you have to tie those together to deploy something. The other word I use a lot in this case is holistically. You want to deploy something holistically. It's great to have a shared language that everyone can depend upon, use, learn, and use to really talk to each other. And it really bridges the gap between siloed teams. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of the benefits of a sender as well. Absolutely. And, and, and something that you... I, I, you kind of sparked in my brain, Michael, is that um, when we've talked to customers before, sometimes when they're first getting into automation, they'll have a team that's the automation team. And that can be dangerous because all of a sudden the automation team becomes the people who have to do all of the automation, right? And so it all falls on their shoulders. And that's not scalable either, right? With this platform, you as the 
team that maybe owns the automation platform, you get to start enabling other people to write their own automations, right? In the system, you kind of, you kind of put the template in there for them to, um, you teach them to fish, right? Instead of handing them a fish. So you start helping them learn to automate and that makes you actually more scalable, right? So it's, it's not just one does all the automation. Now everybody can start become uh, automators. It's interesting you say that. I did run across a customer one time that had an automation team, and I thought it was a great idea to have that centralized automation team. Somebody's kind of enforcing the standard and pushing it. They were six to eight months backlogged, so people were trying to deploy applications, and they didn't have enough people to get it done. So they were they were in trouble. I mean, they were trying to get other people to help, but then they still had the backlog of trying to double check it. So it's I agree with you. Having a centralized team is cool in theory. Everybody's got to automate their own stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, then, uh, it's a journey, too, right? Isn't that what you call it, Michael? I I feel like we're using a lot of the same. So what happens is, like, I'll say something, and then Greg usually says it better than I do. But I will <laughs> say, journey is one of the one of one of the words that I typically use. Um, but yeah, it's just really about the, that. What I was getting to was the domain experts. If you have an overall an overall automation team, that might be great for like kind of herding the cats of different teams to work together, but who better to write automation for security than the security team because they know what the heck is going on. Who better to write uh, you know, automation for, for Rocky and Linux than the Linux administration team because they know what's happening. So to Greg's point, kind of teaching them how to fish, letting them write their own automations. They have the tribal knowledge. They know what needs to be done so they can put it into a format that's easy to consume and then put it into a center and then everyone's off to the races. Yeah, hmm. for sure. I like, uh, usually we talk about champions, right? Like in those other silos, you want to elevate people, right? Because inevitably there's going to be some people that are better at automation than others, right? You know, kind of pick it up a little bit quicker and and you want to like, um, you want to celebrate those people, right? Create those champions in those different silos. And that can be, so, you know, we're talking about big picture here, right? Where you've got this giant company and we've got all these different silos and we're all holding hands and singing kumbaya, right? But that's not usually how it starts. Generally, we have what, what one particular area and the company is the one that brings it in. And then, you know, theoretically, it can grow from there. So it's it's not like you have to have everybody on board, right, Mike? You can start like, oh, this is just in my department. And what are some of the advantages? Like, instead of looking so big picture, let's look a little bit smaller. Like, what's, what's one of the advantages you can think of for like... Um, just one department. I'm, I'm an operations team. Or I'm a network team, and we're bringing it in just to help us. Like, how do you see it fitting in there? I mean, examples that I usually think of are if you're the firewall team, you know, if you have a subset of firewalls you need to make changes to, that's a perfect opportunity to do that at scale with something like a sender. So that you're taking care of the mundane task of making firewall changes and really focusing on the things that really require your expertise that people hired you for. So that's one example that I'm thinking of. Um, anything from, in our case, obviously at here at CIQ, if you're looking at applying simple patches at scale, that's something that's really easy to do once, but it's a pain in the behind to do a thousand times over, right? So just stuff like, to your point, Greg, stuff as simple as that. How can we take these little things that are toil tasks that we would not want to do again and again and those are perfect candidates to get started, to your point. I think it's fun, to Greg's point also, when you start looking at doing something like patching and how many different groups that actually touches to go through a patching cycle. So everybody, yes, I have to turn off monitoring. Operations has to go disable their tools. Then it gets handed back over to someone else to actually disable all of the services, make sure the traffic is not going to it anymore, take it out of the firewall load balancer, I mean, the load balancer, whatever they have to do, there's always those other touches that have to happen. It seems like... As people are having these conversations and they're and they're showing how easy it is for them to automate their piece, that other people get excited about it. Like, well, if you can do it, I can automate my piece. So a very complex patching patching cycle, something that seems very easy for an individual job is is like to Greg's point, a very large overarching the big picture is not easy. It's very complicated, but you can make it easy. So yeah. I have a question. <clears throat> I imagine that a playbook is something like when this happens, do this. If this happens, go here. 
Is that like kind of the basic gist? So like where I'm going with this is if that's a yes, then I imagine that if you have some kind of a flow in your, in your company where you actually do want human eyes on something before it goes through, like, you know, from beginning to end of whatever the, the automation is, like, could you set it to stop and wait until this person okays it? And then it would go to the next department that needed to look at it. And is that kind of what we're talking about here? So so what you're naming is not the function of a single playbook by itself, but that's a function that's built within to a sender. So all those things, if you want to do air handling, so the situation that I usually talk about is if you're deploying a whole infrastructure, maybe the network team has to have their playbook run first. If that's successful, if it's successful, yes, go ahead and do this next step. If it's not successful, maybe you send an error message to everybody in Slack and says, here's it failed and here's why it failed, right? Or uh what were you saying the other part oh if you have an uh, approval gate absolutely that's something that we can do with the sender hey in this part of things that are happening before we just go on and do the next thing or run the next playbook maybe we want to have an approval gate so oh greg has to bless this before we move forward greg sees it does his due diligence says okay this is cool those are absolutely things that we can all do within a sender Wow, that's cool. And you just said that you can get like a Slack notification. So I imagine that there's a lot of different um, opportunities to to get notified wherever, right? Like if you want an email, you could do an email. Maybe you want a text message. Maybe you want it in Slack. Like wherever you want to get that notification, you can set it up in that way. That's I've never done a text. So I, I, don't, <laughs> I won't want to speak to that like intimately because I, but, but to your point, Right. Like what is your workflow? How does your organization do those things? Absolutely. Definitely Slack, definitely email, uh, definitely other things as well. If you want to fit things to your own organization's workflow, we, we can do that. And I, that kind of to the other end of that too, that's kind of the output side, but the input side, the other word that Greg and Zane have heard me say time and again is the word consumption. Mm -hmm. And you had the domain experts that are writing and authoring automation, but what about the end users who may just as intelligent, but they may not be network experts. So if they have to do something to run some automation, maybe they don't know what a playbook is. Maybe they don't know what a sender is. Maybe they don't care to know. You know, if you want to do something where you present them with an interface that they are more familiar with, and so the ones that we've seen a lot in the past is ServiceNow or Jira or something else, that's from the input side, it can be just as, um, I think the word we're looking for is ubiquitous. So like anybody can do automation and be none the wiser. Mm, yeah, and service now, I mean, that's going to be a place like an ITSM where somebody's going to go and say, uh, request a new laptop, or you know, they say, uh, give me a new printer or something like that. And in that same system, they can say, hey, give me a firewall change, give me a virtual machine, and that ITSM will call a sender and it'll take care of the rest for you. Right. So a seamless interface. They don't realize they're hitting automation. It looks just like anything else to them which is pretty cool. Hmm. One of the things I've always felt like when it comes to automation, it's great, but there's always a group, usually internal audit type folks, who want to see what is taking place or want to see if an environment is in a state. And it's easy to give them a playbook and tell them to go run it, right? But would it be nice if there was just something easier to go look at? Oh my Wouldn't gosh. Be nice. Are you hint hinting at something? I'm I'm hint hinting hint. at something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me um let me share my screen. I think I've got one up over just there. because I've had this asked so many times. Yes. How is what is the best way to do this thing? And this thing is a sender with ledger. It's this one. Ledger. Here. So this is a way that you could do like an audit as well, right? Oh, this is so weird. I've never shared a specific tab. I like sharing screens. That way I can move around fast. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Here is Ledger. So uh, Ledger was born out of exactly what you're talking about, Zane. How do we make this stuff easier? And I wish, wish, wish uh, Jimmy Connor was here. He is actually one of our team members here. And he wrote this and subsequently open sourced it, right? Putting it back out into the community. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is version 1.0. So if you see something in here that you think would be cool to add, change, modify, please let us know if you can contribute, contribute code. Totally cool. Uh, if you can't, just give us ideas, right? We're, we're wanting to build this, change it, 
and uh, make it, you know, best fit your environments as well. But so it was born out of, we have a lot of customers that say exactly like Zane was talking about, you know, we have compliance requirements or honestly, we just want other folks to be able to find information out of our systems really quickly and simply. And we can do that using a sender by sending off logs, right? We can send it off to a logging server. The only problem with that is most of the commercial logging systems are actually licensed by the number of messages they get and uh, a sender can generate a lot of messages. Imagine you're having uh, thousands of hosts constantly automating all the time, right? That's a lot of messages being sent off. So Jimmy said, how about we write something specifically to solve this problem? And he did. And so what this does is it collects all of those logging messages and does interesting things with them. So first and foremost, uh, whenever we uh, run an Ansible playbook, we can do something called gathering facts. And what that really does is it connects into your systems and pulls a bunch of interesting information, right? So if it's a Linux server, it can pull kind of the flavor it's running, all the packages installed, all the IP information, your drive, all that stuff. Has it nice and variableized? Well, guess what? In Ledger here, it can pull all of that off and store it. So I can go back and I can, this is kind of a, a quick and dirty one. We've got a Windows box, we've got a Linux box, but I can pull up that specific host. I can find very specific fact information that was pulled, or I can just search or say IPv4 stuff. I can grab all of that, right? So nice, right? And we can kind of reference things really quickly, but how do we actually use that? How do we deliver that to somebody? We do that with a report. So in here, We've got Linux server, right? I've only got one Linux server in here and one Windows server. But you can see uh, this is uh, the default uh, reports that are built in. You can immediately see, well, it's a nice graphical uh, view of it, but we have all of these export methods baked in right now. Uh, so you can like pull this out as a PDF or what have you. Another really interesting thing is these reports, they have a schedule option. So I can run this daily, weekly, monthly the idea being it can generate that report in whatever format i want and deliver it to my compliance team my security team maybe i'm trying to pull a report specifically on um i don't know vlan interfaces out of my network and i want that for me and my network team right we can see all that stuff like just have it come straight to us right the whole idea of automation is so you don't have to touch it right why don't we make it so that it just comes to you right and so that's one reporting thing and again remember I said, this is in development product. If you see something you'd like different in here, please tell us. But uh, I digress. Let me show you kind of how the reports are built right now. Very functional. So filter, you add something in there and you say, I want Ansible system equals to Linux. You could add an extra filter item in here that says distro equals Rocky, right? You can pull all of your Rocky stuff. You've got your sorting. Here's our view fields. You just add a column. You give it a pretty display name, right? Based on the fact info you want, you shuffle those things around. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You've got the information here. Show me what you want the report to look like and it'll generate it. But that's not all folks. Got my sham wow here. No, um, the next <laughs> thing it's doing right now is it pulls in <laughs> your changes as well, right? So whenever a task runs in a sender for each piece of automation, it will and for each piece of automation, each host, it will report whether it made a change or not. And we can actually log all of that stuff here in Ledger. So for example, I can click, I don't know, this random one right here, and it's in kind of your standard diff format, right? Like you're accustomed to seeing red means I moved something, or remove something rather, green means I added. So we can see here on the pam.d system off file, we added these fail lock requirements, right? So you can kind of quickly see all this stuff. So pretty useful tool for compliance, for, um, I don't know, I guess you could do some configuration drift stuff. Like if you see something, I mean, I can, in networking, I can imagine having a, a daily run of this that's looking for any changes on my network equipment, right? If something pops in, we didn't make any changes. You know, we didn't expect any changes to happen. And I see something come through in the report. It's probably something I need to take a look at, right? So a lot of really interesting capabilities, in my opinion, already there. Um, I can't wait to see what this turns into, though. But another cool thing, but there's more. Yeah, one last thing is that whenever you install a sender, Jimmy has put all this together where 
installs a sender, you have the ability to also auto install Ledger at the exact same time, and it will pair the two together so that it's all taken care of and it's ready to start accepting messages right out of the box. So I am super stoked for this one. Craig, I feel like we're in an infomercial a little bit just for a second, <laughs> but wait, there's more. There's more. <laughs> I like do this stuff gets me so tweaked because it's like <laughs> we have been asking for this specific thing for so long like can somebody please uh make this happen and of course jimmy did it like in a weekend as I, jimmy is wont to do so. i was gonna say he's super new <laughs> like he just yeah but he's super team. fast it feels it's like 15 minutes hard. ago yeah and you're like and he made this yeah and then it's just it's so beautiful it's yeah. really 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 nice so jimmy Kudos, man. Hope you're yeah. Well, worried. I mean, you know, there's always compromises. He's super smart, but his sense of humor is terrible. It's awful. His jokes are the worst. So, you know, no person is probably the worst. Balance. They're usually pretty funny. And they're usually directed oh. at Justin. So it makes it fun. Suck a oh, little life like out of me every time he tells one of his puns. It's just little. But they're great. They're great. He leans into it. I'm sorry you're not here, Justin. <laughs> charm. Makes it more fun uh. to talk about you. Okay. So this is just the beginning. I mean, not only for Ledger, but there are other things coming that we'll we will talk about as they come out that um, Greg and Michael and Jimmy and team are working on to put into this that we've been hearing from customers recently. Like we need this, we need to be able to do this. It would be nice if we had this. So we're working as fast as we can to get this stuff in there. Um, we do have some questions. I see that Mr. Rush is here. Thanks for joining, Dave. We love questions. Do you see natural language AI being integrated to handle the creation of playbooks? Yeah, I can yes, give sir. my thought process here. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Yeah. No, it's funny because I I very intermittently play with chat GPT, so other people probably have better experience with this than I do, but I was shocked. I think someone told me, it might have been Zane, he told me like Ansible, you can create Ansible playbooks. I'm like, really? What are you talking about? You just yes. drop in a prompt to say, create Ansible playbooks to do X, Y, Z, and it was doing it. And is it was it giving me 100% something that I might write myself? No, but usually I don't write a playbook from scratch anyway. I usually start from something. Chances are someone's tackled the job before I did. So it gets you maybe 80% of the way there. And I've also seen other tools that are not automation related, but are still embedding uh, some flavor of chat GPT for lack of better phrasing into the tools and we can do that. So that's absolutely something. Would I like to see that? Absolutely. And I think this is what, when Greg was saying, like, if you want to give any feedback to what we can do, um, I think this is a perfect example of that. So I don't want to overpromise and deliver, but I, I would love to see this as part of the product. Yeah. And, I think and, Forrest would too. As you <laughs> say, to, would be really excited to see this. To Michael's point, he said he, he very seldom um, starts like from a, a blank slate. And anytime I'm trying to do anything uh, within a playbook, I'll type, you know, Ansible playbook and the thing I'm trying to accomplish, I'm probably going to find 15 versions that people have already created. And something somebody told me before is uh, don't reinvent the wheel, steal the wheel. So somebody's already done it. It's already out there in the public Git repository. I put all my stuff in public Git repo, grab it and just go from there. Bar AI for everything wheel. else. Borrow the wheel. <clears throat> I thought that um, chat GPT only had uh, like information from a few years ago. Are they, are they updating like its knowledge base and its information continuously? Depends on the version. The chat GPT four is actually more current. Yeah. So okay. if you're willing to pay, you can get a, a newer language model. Uh -huh. But what's surprising is even the old one, they cut off in 20, was it 21 is really good at, <laughs> at generating playbooks. It's scary good. I think we have another question. Is yeah. there another question? Yeah. Oh, David. David's back. Hi, David. Um, report templates to perform standardized audits. So I would say that I, I can't speak to the, that's probably going to be a better for Jimmy question for the, for the ledger piece, but absolutely. If you want to just have standardized reports, standardized templates, templates are actually like a key word when you're talking about answer. Um, so the short answer is yes, we can use what, if it's ledger or otherwise we can use Jinja 2 templating to create standardized reports, uh, in whatever format that you want. So hundred percent, um, without more context of this question, I would say the answer to that is, 
is an enthusiastic yes. Let me pause and see if Greg has any better thoughts. Again, I'm going to say something. Greg's going to say it better, probably. No, 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 no. Just different. Just different. I'll dumb it down. That's what I try and do. Make it. I make it for the masses, Michael. For people Justin like Justin is me. listening. So he says he's spirit. Say it's better for me, but you know. No, no, no. no. Sorry, like uh, you're talking about. What uh, I heard Greg say is Greg called me a robot. No, I called you too smart. For for the likes of me, that's what it is. You're too highbrow. You always get your pinky up. Too fancy. Um, wow. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Talking about uh, standardized audits. I also uh, was thinking about how um, in Ascender now we are pre baking in a whole bunch of playbooks. So we have uh, a ton that are out there. We're going to be continually maintaining, continually adding in. Again, give us feedback. What do you want to see in there? We're going to have that stuff baked in so that. Uh, you know, you just instead of having to get all the ingredients and make the cookies, you know, you just open up the box and there you are and they're delicious. Um, so we do have a lot of hardening stuff in there. Um, the ones for fat gathering for ledger already in there. Right. So if you wanted to, like, do that, you can just immediately right, right out of the box, just go in there and schedule that. Have it run on whatever interval you want. Keep all that stuff up to date. So there is a bunch of stuff that can be used for uh, audits as well and compliance, whatever buzzword you want me to throw in there. Right, we have some of those in. Michael doesn't eat sweets, so cookie reference doesn't work. Mm. I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe he my, is a robot. Wife will still make some. Uh huh. <laughs> so on that note, Michael, I would love for it, you to tell the story of pulling information off the of switches and creating an S3 bucket, delivering it as an HTML page, because that was fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean. I, so I always think about like, what are the different ways that people may choose to consume information? And if you're looking at something like, you know, Greg already talked about a PDF, talked about Slack, we talked about emails. And one of the things that I would do is, you know, S3 has an option now to just create a static web page within an S3 bucket. And I was just thinking to myself, what might I do to get basic information, gathering that those facts from network devices in order to show uh, maybe like Cisco iOS version or some other information that might be, you know, just good to have. Or in my case, I was using it to show like, hey, we can see what's out of compliance. And that's exactly what I did. I used to kind of to David's question earlier, it was a standardized templated audit for lack of better phrasing, but it was using Jinja templates to both grab information and generate an HTML page, drop into that S3 bucket, and we can run it on demand or you can run it on a schedule kind of to your earlier point but that was a great way to show value to you know maybe people that want to get information and the other great thing about that too is you're not even exposing yourself to a lot of risk because you're not actually making changes yet you were literally just capturing information to show current state of your devices and i think that's one of the great ways to get started with automation because it might be daunting to turn around and try to make changes at scale That'd be really scary. I'd be scared to do that to start with in an organization because I feel like that's a resume building opportunity if you do it wrong. But just capturing information to start with and put it into that S3 bucket, it's a great way to start and easily to visually consume. Thank you for telling the story, Michael. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Rose, I think you had a question. Yeah. So I was just thinking about the different, you know, customers and people that we talk to and, um, Greg actually put out a great little, like, I think it's like a five or six minute video on our YouTube if you want to check that out. But he actually shows how to use a sender to automate your like long term stable versions of, um, uh, of your Rocky Linux. So like say, for instance, somebody wants to stay on 8.6, which is pretty common, right? Because their applications and stuff need to just be on that stable version. So you can automate like backported security updates, like however you want them to be automated daily, monthly, whenever it is. Um, so it's a really cool video. But one of the things that comes up oftentimes when we're talking to people is, well, how do I then use this, this tool in my air-gapped environment, right? Where like, I'm not connected to the internet. So maybe can you guys um, speak to, do you have to have internet to use this? Or is this one of those things that you can download, have your security check out, and then, I don't know, put on some kind of a disk and bring it into your place or however they do that? It's pretty much how they do that. That's how they do that. So that's all good though, right? Like it, it'll work in that environment. 
Yeah, if you I'm have say yes, but I'm gonna let Michael take the actual question. The answer is yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. Oh. So, I mean, honestly, if you're, and I've had a couple of clients want to do this already, if they want to just test it out in their own kind of sandbox, um, we're actually, we can use something, just kind of a stripped down Kubernetes called K3S to install it. And that could be definitely on your premise. Um, I've run it on a VM in my house right now. So like, that's an example of how I can do that. If, if clients have um, some flavor of Kubernetes that's within their environment that doesn't touch the outside internet, then that's, that's absolutely something they could do, but it literally could be just as small as a VM with the appropriate memory and storage and compute. And if you want to run it like that, you can. Hmm. And uh, why you mentioned it, Rose, and it popped in my head, you said there's a video for the LTS. I think they just dropped a blog post on it as well that does the full walkthrough, breaks down the playbooks, how to actually get it into a sender, all that stuff that's in there. Awesome. I think it's also on on the air gapped environment stuff. So we got asked to build mountain for air gapped environments first. So tying the two together, so being able to actually put content in to mountain and access it with a sender gives you a lot of flexibility and the ability to do a lot of things in the air gapped environment without internet access. And it actually, for sure, the customers that we had actually takes a server, bring it out, they update it, make sure everything's verified, validated by security, they can move it and they actually take it and walk it into the air gapped environment, plug it back in. So then it's updated, it's been verified, it's secure. It has all, everything that it needs from container images, patches, playbooks, everything's on there. You have a priest blessed it, throw, throw some holy water on it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Turn around three times. <laughs> Everybody signs off that if there's something wrong with it, they're going to get fired and yeah, sign in blood. Hmm? <laughs> oh man, this is cool. This is really, this is really great. You guys, everyone who's been working on this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It looks so, it's so, such so clean, right? Like when you were showing that ledger, it just is, it looks very nice it's inviting so i don't know if that means anything but i like it's inviting it. i love it it, it is <laughs> it is all right so what other things do we want to talk about here guys we talked about the ledger we took some questions are there any other questions um from you guys out there anything that you want to know about a sender or automation where we are right now so i believe that if you guys do reach out to us on our website or send us an email if you're already you know, on, on our list and you want to talk about automation, you want a little demo, something that um, you know, is, is more specific to, to your needs and you know, we'll show you how to do it. And you're like, yes, we want, we want to go ahead with this. Are you, Greg, or somebody on our team going to like help them set it up at first? Like, What kind of like, hand-holding do we do at CIQ to like, make sure that people are set up properly if automation is a completely new thing for them? Mm. So, you on the spot here because yeah for sure for sure yes oh yeah 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 let's go let's go rose squaring off with me here we are um <laughs> no we uh as michael talked about we have different uh several different ways of installing it so basically we're going to be able to get it in your environment one way or the other um jimmy actually has gone a long way to making the install very simple it's basically a script that we run and magically all the infrastructure is is built for us so uh, somebody, like I said, as dumb as me can even do the install, uh, and help a customer through all of those pieces. I love You're it. You're going to stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like, I mean, to me, to me, that's one of the magical parts, right? When I came in from being a network engineer to automation, it was terrifying. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Right. It was, for a moment, I had a bit of an existential crisis. Like, does this mean the end of Greg? You know, like, do, do you not need me anymore? But no, I learned. You still have to be a subject matter expert. You still have to know the thing you're doing, right? You still have to understand what it means to be a network engineer, right? And you are still valuable. You are still needed. So don't worry about that. Um, but then learning how easy it was actually for me to start writing these playbooks and integrating these things was transformative for me, it, especially in like I would write automations where I started writing out flows, right? So if I was going to do a, a task, Step one, step two, I'd write it all out. And then I would start brainstorming. Like, this is something I didn't traditionally think was ever possible to, to automate. Could I actually do that? And so I had ones where, and I have a demo where I'm monitoring a remote site. It goes down. Well, it actually calls a sender, right? A sender connects to my phone system, puts a call handler in place. So our phones stop ringing off the hook. 
right? And so it's letting customers know, hey, what's going on? And also, guess what? I get to concentrate on what I'm trying to, to work on here. Uh, then it goes and collects all the information just like a human would, creates a ticket and service now, and then sends it to my engineering team in Slack, right? So it basically does all those human steps. Now, it's going to be happy to do that three in the afternoon, but more importantly, it'll do it at three in the morning. And that junior engineer who's first on call will get this big triage list of what is probably wrong. And guess who gets to sleep, right? Guess who gets to go on vacation and I'll get that call. Guess who doesn't have to miss that birthday party or that Christmas? I don't know if you can read between the lines, but I have missed all those things. And automation stuff, while it was scary at first, actually made my life better. So I'm a huge proponent. I will, I will get off my soapbox now. <laughs> no, I'm glad that you said that, honestly, because that was kind of on my mind too, right? I mean, people get nervous. I mean, you know, the world being automated, right? It, it, there's a lot of talk out there of like, oh, well, like, you know, what are humans going to do then? And I really, I just, I, I appreciate because I know that that's got to be something on some, you know, some people's minds of like, well, do I really want to push this? Um, but it does save people time and money, right? Like as, as the engineer and as the company, um, but it's in a, in a different kind of way. So thank you for explaining that. I appreciate that. I've seen a lot more people oh, get well, promotion so. by doing a lot more work with a lot less. It's pretty amazing. Mm. I was going to say too, like, what did you get hired for? Meaning something interesting you want to kind of work and be excited about it i, I started that phrasing off wrong but like if your job <laughs> is to you know like okay if i got to patch servers I'm like yeah what'd you get hired for we'll just say yeah that right. Michael, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'll say that right I to my face live in front of everybody engineers to the developers yeah. i have people skills uh, <laughs> But, but yeah, like, you know, what are the things that really excite you about your job? What are the things that literally cannot be automated that really require your expertise, which Greg has loud despite whatever he says, but you know, like if you free yourself up to do those exciting and fun and business changing things by having some automation, take care of those mundane things that are just as important, but kind of monotonous and prone to human error you know but that's a really great way to look at these kind of right kind of kind of solutions so anything that you are doing repetitively right where it's like you want to set it up so that it's done correctly but you don't necessarily need to be doing the same thing over and over and over again so when you have something like a playbook that can say okay you know when this happens this is triggered do this because that's exactly what i would do Yes, these are known processes right. that maybe your organization knows, hey, we have the tribal knowledge to do X, Y, Z, and that's it. Like, how, yes, if you can standardize that and put it into an Ansible playbook, then absolutely, 100%. And it means you're making less mistakes and all that. Yeah. I love it. So this sounds really powerful and amazing. And every time I ask Greg here, Mr. Stash, if it can do this, he says, yes. And I, well, what about this? Yes. And what about that? Yes. So this sounds like it might be super crazy pricey. I know we got a question on price. I don't know, Alex, if you want to put it up there, but I'm going to make you do it, Zane. I'm going to make you at Mark, least give it a Mark little bit of question. an overview of like how our at CIQ, we've modeled things in a way that we think is like the best for us and the community. Absolutely. So this is something, one of the reasons I really came here is I was excited about is looking at how people do support differently. Uh, we view the community differently. We want to give everything to the community. We want to support the community. We want to support the people. So just like everything else that we do here, it is a by the person. So we're not here to, to make sure you're staying within the number of things you paid for with the number of nodes or number of network devices. We just want to make the admins who have to go automate things successful. So we're, we are doing a by the person model, automate away. It's very simple. Yeah. Thanks Mark for that question. Absolutely. It, is, it is important. So, I mean, obviously it's going to be, you know, a little bit tailored to your situation. Cause like you, you come on our side, you guys, it is wild. The variety. <laughs> That, that we see so it is gonna yes kind of it is on, right everyone's a unicorn that's what zane says you know it's like that's all we have is unicorns so it's kind of hard to um automatize it makes that, it fun. <laughs> the pricing part so definitely reach out to us we we want to talk to you 
Cool. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. I think there was one more. Was there another question? Yes. Mario, thanks for being here, ma'am. I would like if there is some code as example, maybe with Vagrant or LXC. I'm assuming they're asking if you can, well, I guess we're talking about Vagrant. Are you asking, can you spin up Vagrant images and play with it? Like we don't have a baked in Vagrant image yet? Question mark? Not so. Yeah, question mark to being a little... I guess if, Mark, if, if there's a way we could elaborate on the question, I want to make sure we're answering it correctly. Now, could you means... automate spinning up vagrant images with a sender? Absolutely. You could. Just making a system call, you could do it. Make sure vagrant's installed, you could do that too. Sure, if you're talking about managing Linux containers, you can do that as well. Yeah. It's code as example oh. as well. Like uh, the playbooks we create, we're putting all of those in public repositories, which playbooks for those that are uninitiated are really just human readable text files that are scripts that inform uh, a sender like what automated steps you're supposed to perform. And we're putting all that stuff up, like all the everything associated with the blog post, any demo we ever do, those are always going to be in, in public repositories for you to see. Thank you for the question. Hope that hope that answers the question. I think that we've covered everything. I know. Let's see a ledger. Okay, yeah, we talked about mountain. Yep, we've gone over, so we've done a lot of talking. Is there <laughs> just to just to close that loop? What's the best way? Because I know there's ways to contact us, but let's say for the sake of argument, we didn't answer that question thoroughly. What's the best way to reach out to us through the? Through the the primary web page or? or the website yeah ciq.com okay go to ciq.com there's a little nice little chat guy you can chat with someone or you can send us a note leave us leave us your email contact info and get back with you yeah. send an email to mustache at ciq.com mustache all the, all the, that will go nowhere but thank you <laughs> <laughs> now i have to go create an alias <laughs> that's so fun all right. So that, that's very exciting. You guys, thank you so much for all of the incredible work that you do. We are definitely ascending to higher heights. We are going up this mountain. There's just an incredible amount of amazingness that you can do with this. We want to talk with you. If you were at all curious of like, is this right for my business? Is this right for me? Is this right for the company? Is this right for my position? Like, how does this all work? We want to answer those questions. So if you have any curiosity at all, Go to our website, CIQ.com. Make sure that you go into the chat, just as Zane said. There's like a million places to get a hold of us. I think every single page has, you know, some somewhere where you like put in your information. <laughs> reach out the to answer to all of Rose's questions was yes, by the way, just to make sure. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> And we'll get back with you. So make sure that you like and you subscribe. We're here every Thursday, 11 Pacific time with um, live webinars of more information. And just like we said, but there's more. So every week, there's always more that we are adding to what we're doing here at CIQ. And before we go, you have to throw up David's last comment. What? Where is it? Rush. Oh, it's what? fantastic. David Rush. Greece is the word. We're, you're Rocky, the one that I <laughs> you're, want. You're Rocky, Please. the one that I want. Get it? <laughs> the one that I want. There you go. <laughs> Ronnie. <Running. laughs> okay, I'm keeping my uh, angel guys. Don't worry. Thank you, David. That was fantastic. Let's go ahead and <laughs> thank you, everyone. Stay keep coming back. We will be talking more and more about what we're putting into this thing. So we really appreciate the time. Thanks, guys.